after the introduction, I'd like to remember, remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and will be capable of repeated viewing or another use by such third parties. Please also be aware that if technical difficulties interrupt the meeting, it cannot be overcome. I will need to adjourn the meeting. Um, apologies for absence. None, Jim. Thank you. Declarations of interest? No, none required. No. Any additional reports of portfolio holders? No? No. Uh, Councillor Wixley's got his blue hand up. Is that for a declaration of interest, Councillor? Uh, apologies, I couldn't quite get to the blue hand quick enough. Yeah, I think I probably should declare a non pecuniary interest in uh, agenda item 10 in, in respect that I took part in the public consultation on the sports centre in Baker's Lane uh, when the uh, exhibition was held at uh, St Sir John's Church in August. Thank you, Councillor Wixley. I think if that's the case, probably most members would need to note um, their, their um, input into the consultation process. So. Uh, I'm not sure quite how you recalled that, but obviously myself, Councillor Holly Whitbread, probably any Epping councillors would, would have been involved in the consultation. As it's a public consultation, I don't think it's really a no. declaration of interest. Okay. Councillor Kane, sorry, wants to speak. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Chairman, just to uh, make a note, you uh, appear to have stepped over number four minutes. I have. I have. Minutes of the last meeting. Can I take those as being agreed? Agreed. Thank you. So, are there any additional reports of portfolio holders? No? Uh, Public questions or requests to address the Cabinet? None, Chairman. Thank you. Item 7, report of overview and scrutiny. Councillor Sartin. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, the only uh, meeting that we've had since your last uh, Cabinet meeting was the special meeting that was called uh, on the 7th of January, which heard the calling of the decision relating to the adoption of Evian Forest SAC interim air quality mitigation strategy. Um, there was a full debate at that meeting. Um, had, uh, a lot of discussion took place. At the end of the um, the discussion, the majority of the members of the OS committee voted to confirm the decision of the portfolio holder. Um, and I would just say that there is a full minute of the meeting that is now available on the council's website if anybody wants to read the full details of that. Uh, and the only other thing I will say is that our next meeting is on the 2nd of February uh, when we'll be having um, an officer along from the uh, North East Parking Partnership. Thank you, Chairman. Lovely. Thank you, Councillor Sartre. And that report's just for noting. We'll move onwards to item uh, eight. Which Chairman, is I've indicated, please. Well, it's, it's only for noting, Councillor Murray, but yes, you can make a quick comment. Uh, thank you, Chairman. We do normally uh, talk about ONS at Cabinet. I'm not going to talk about the issue, if that's what you're worried about. Uh, um, but I'm me, Councillor Murray. I don't like the preemptive, let's just move on. I'm only doing what's normal procedure, and I often comment about ONS at, at Cabinet, uh, so there's nothing out of order in me uh, doing that. Uh, can I thank the Chairman for her, her, her report? Uh, and I understand what she meant when she said it was a majority of members uh, that supported the decision, but it wasn't a absolute majority. Uh, I have to say, and I, I never criticise individual councillors by name, never have done, and I never will. I've uh, been subjected to quite a lot of it myself in over the years, but I will never get involved in that. Uh, but I was very pleased about the process and the way it was done, but I was actually quite surprised by the low-level involvement of members of ONS. Uh, I've checked the, uh, the webcast again today, and very few members of ONS uh, actually took part in the uh, debate. So I was surprised by uh, the lack of debate within ONS membership, a very good debate from other members of council, 
uh, I was also uh, very surprised by the level of ab 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 abstaining uh, mm -hmm. on the issue. But we are uh, where we are. Um, mm -hmm. Because of the issue, I think it is in order for me to ask, is there any news about the uh, uh, special full council that has been asked for by five members? I hope that satisfies you, Chairman. I've deliberately not discussed the issue because tonight is not the time and place. Thank you. Thank you. I believe the date of the full council that uh, is being set will be sometime in February. And I believe the chairman is in discussion with Democratic Services to arrange that time. Um, OK, moving onwards. Item 8, Council House Building Cabinet Committee. Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is the report and the minutes, sorry, of the Council House Building Committee from the 8th of December. It was a, a very um, good committee, actually. We had some really detailed discussions, um, particularly on the initiation of Phase 5, which will see new um, council properties built across Epping Forest District and will actually see us at the total of over 500 new council homes built as part of our council house building program which is fantastic so um, that was really good to see and a really good and detailed debate at that meeting happy to take any questions okay any for any questions councillor morgan uh thank you chairman just a, a question for councillor um holly whitbread um i read the report and i can't see any mention of the culvers at matching green this was deferred or um, planning application was refused some time ago and the officers were going to look at um, ways of increasing the car parking before they demolished the garages. Is there any further development on that, please, Mr. Councillor Whitbread? Um, thank you, Councillor. Sorry, Chairman, I jumped straight in there. Um, thank you, Councillor Morgan. And I, I'm afraid I don't have an update, but I will speak with officers and provide you with one as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, Councillor Heath. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, sorry, I missed the uh, the one in December. I was just wondering which parcel of land was in Milescroft Way that was being proposed for uh, building. Is it the piece of ground at the end that was going to be the car park? Um, I'm, thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Heap. I'll have to get back to you by email on the specific piece of land, but I will be in touch. Thank you. And then Councillor Murray. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I was at that meeting, and I think Councillor Heap has asked a good question. Uh, I don't think it is because I'm sure that it wouldn't have uh, passed the attention of uh, of ward members or or myself because we fought hard to keep that piece of green that's much loved by by the existing members. But I would be interested in the answer. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank the portfolio holder for her report, and I think her stewardship of the uh, of the house building program has been excellent. So well done, Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pond. That's the pond. Your wonderful silent, Councillor Pond. I was just asking um, if when ward members will be consulted on the new plan for um, on page 28, 29 of the agenda. Thank you, Councillor Pond. And I know that officers are getting round to the consultation phase. I know that um, some of the projects listed here have already, the consultation phase has already begun, but within due course, and I'm happy to chase up any specifics for her. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Wixley. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, just to say, the piece of land in Milescroft Way, if it uh, is the piece of land which was originally chosen as a car park, um, it was actually underwater this week, so it's probably not a good place to either uh, build council housing or to put a car park there. I'm, I'm sure that will be taken into account. Um, members, you, you've had the full report. Can we just take that as being noted? Are all, all recommendations agreed? No, I agree. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Item nine, highways ranger service. On pages 35 to 58, that is Councillor Avey. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is a report by way of an update on the service. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. 
well done to Mandy, Kim, and others uh, for this service. It's doing really well. I hope you like the pictures showing the fantastic work the highway rangers are doing. Um, I suppose, really, it's just one thing. Uh, I need to manage people's expectations for what this team are able to achieve, given the resources available. Um, I, I would hope we can build on the success um, and expand the team and funding for this work because I think we've got off to a great start and I intend to carry on that. But, um, you know, there are issues over the resources that we have. I hope it may well be able to, we may be able to add an apprentice to the team. That would be, or apprentices to the team. I think that would be good. I'll leave that thought with you uh, for future consideration and take any questions if there are any. Thank you. Councillor Hollywood Bread. Thank you, Chairman. Not so much a question, but a comment just to say what a wonderful service I think this is. I know in my own ward, I've seen the pavements in Epping High Street uh, mended and we've been waiting for a long time for that. So that's really great to see. Also, finger, finger posts, which I know uh, Councillor Perkis in Faden Boys is, is delighted about. Um, so thank you to Kim and Mandy. This is a brilliant project and it's a really good thing for the district to be doing. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ellicott Patel. Leader. Um, I think the, re the report highlights um, the, the great idea that you came up with in bringing this service back to the, to, to the district council. I know you you wanted this for, for, for a number of years and it, uh, I think Members, members tonight, and and also our residents can see the benefit of bringing that serv this service back in house again. Um, I'm I'm welcome to hear Councillor Raby's comments around um, what what we may potentially be able to do if resources are increased. Obviously, in the current climate, that 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 may not be possible for this, you know, for the next financial year. But I am I am warm to to see that at least there is an appetite for us to do that moving forward. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Councillor Morgan. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, I also uh, agree that they do an excellent job. Is there any chance of them ever doing any potholes? Because we, we don't seem to be able to get any done for the last two years in our rural areas, and um, it's getting real, real disaster in places. Thank you for that question, Councillor Morgan. As you know, the one of the limitations on this service is they aren't allowed to go and fix potholes in roads. I think um, there's a possibility in the future we could get some form of leeway over that, but not at the moment. So I'm afraid potholes are left to uh, Essex Highways to deal with, I'm afraid. Thank you. Councillor John Phillip. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Whitbread and Councillor Whit um, Patel have already touched on a couple of things. Uh, as you know, the budget is well under when we took it to uh, the select panel early on uh, this week. So if we can cope with uh, adding more resource to the highway rangers in the within the confines of the existing budget, then that is something clearly it's well, well worth supporting. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear Holly Whitbread also recognising the uh, value of finger posts. And I know you, you yourself, Leader, have had many in-depth discussions with uh, my council purpose around finger posts within Thaden Boyce and elsewhere in the district. Uh, I think things that help uh, our district to look better are definitely things that we should be uh, concentrating on, but we have to recognise the financial constraints that we're working under at the moment. Thank you. Councillor, Councillor Philip, all, all good points made. Yes, we have to be very mindful of our financial constraints, but also our desire to improve the place that we live. And I, I think that's that's key to this. It's not just about um, what we're doing now, it's our aspirations for the future, and certainly place is very high on our agenda. So uh, let, let's watch this space, shall we? Because um, I'm uh, very ambitious for what we're doing, and um, I know my colleagues, including yourself, Councillor Philip, are as well, and to see what we can do to make uh, Epping Forest a place where we all want to live, work, and uh, play. Um, I've got no other members. I think this is a report just for noting. And actually, can I just say a big thank you to Mandy, Kim and team. The, the, the people who go out there and do the jobs, do a first class job for us. The quality of some of the work is exceptional. Um, 
and I'm really proud of it. And I'm proud that we managed to bring it back to Epping Forest. Um, thank you very much for what you're doing. Uh, Councillor Avey, any last comments? No, uh, Leader, thank you for that. And um, let's carry on and uh, hope for even greater things in the future. Wonderful. Great. And then we move on to item 10, finance and economic development, Baker's Lane and Cottage Lane development sites. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Uh, um, I will keep my remarks in this fairly short. It is a detailed report that calls out uh, the background to background to the situation. Uh, we're particularly uh, interested in two of the sites within Epping, uh, Baker's Lane and Cottage Lane. Uh, through the consultation that Councillor Wixley mentioned earlier, uh, it's come clear in what direction these developments are likely to take. Um, we are definitely fully in support of producing a new leisure centre, and it's great that we've been able to find somewhere to actually get that on uh, the ground in Epping. However, to do that, it uh, is taking up one of the car parks to maintain that the car parking within uh, the town of Epping, we need to convert the other car park into a multi-storey car park. And in terms of scheduling, clearly we need to get that in place before we start work on the ground on the sports centre so that we don't impact the overall parking provision within uh, Epping allowing uh, our residents to still come in and hopefully support uh, our businesses within Epping to keep them, keep them going. The key part, and just before I go further on, I will highlight before anybody else does, the typographical error in paragraph 1.4. Uh, that should, of course, say Waltham Abbey and not Waltham Forest. Uh, we got it right further down in the report, but missed that one uh, when we were proofreading. The key part, I think, is actually looking at the cost and implications. We need to allocate uh, the appropriate capital spend for these within our budget. But we also need to decide how we want to progress, uh, particularly with the sports centre. Uh, the original idea was to uh, have Qualys build that, own it, build it, and then potentially either operate or sell back to the council. There are a number of uh, significant disadvantages with the, that, taking that uh, approach, which are called out in the report. And what the report is suggesting, I believe, is that we should progress uh, negotiations with both uh, Places for Leisure and Qualys to see the best deal that we can get to have this sports centre built on a build uh, contract rather than Qualys taking ownership and us having to pay uh, capital get that stamp duty going both directions. Um, I'm happy to hear what other cabinet members are going to suggest on this, but I believe we should work with um, our existing contacts, particularly looking at places at Leisure who did a good job in construction of the Waltham Abbey uh, Sports Centre, which has, I think, been very successful and look to see where, what the best deal that we can get there is. If that's the case, then we obviously retain ownership of the site and having retained ownership of the site, we have to put finance in to our capital budgets for our next year and the following years to cover the cost of construction. Chairman, uh, I'm happy to take questions. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Phillip. Any questions, members? Councillor Sam Kane. Thank you, Leader. Um, I just wanted to uh, make comments that I'm fully in favour of, um, I can never remember whether it's evading or avoiding is the legal one, but I'll tax a uh, uh, requirement for uh, um, by not selling and then having to buy back. Um, if we can avoid the tax burden, that's that's a good thing. I also uh, wholeheartedly uh, support the idea of talking to uh, Places Leisure as well as Qualys. Places Leisure have done a really good job for us over the last couple of years, and it would make sense to um, ask the professionals to get involved as well. 
Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I, I echo uh, Councillor Keane's uh, remarks. I don't think it's either evasion or avoidance. I think we're just taking a sensible, prudent approach to what we do with our money and, and don't do things that uh, that give us an unnecessary tax burden. Um, certainly, I've been, I was with the Waltham Abbey Pleasure Centre. I was down there a number of times during the construction phase for the opening as well. And the feedback is definitely very positive on that. So I, I think it's quite the right thing to do to work with them. It's worth highlighting that in terms of the design that's already gone in for the planning application, uh, Qualys has been working closely with Places for Leisure to make sure that uh, it's lined up. And as such, there may be uh, consideration that we have to do for the work that Qualys has done already getting it through, to planning and probably through planning. But the good thing is that the work done should transfer over very easily without requirement for a significant change. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Leader. I think it's absolutely right and proper that we are uh, liaising with um, Places for Leisure uh, regarding the, the, the new facility that we're looking to bring in uh, in Epping. Um, I mean, what they've provided for us in Waltham Abbey and also in that the extent, um, the refurbishment that they, they for the refurbishment and extension that they did at, at a Loughton site speaks for itself. It's a fantastic piece of work. I mean, they are the specialists in this area. Um, and I think it's right that they work in conjunction with Qualys to deliver the best possible facility for our residents. Thank you. Councillor Simon here. Uh, thank you, Chem. Uh, it's just a question about um, page 62. Paragraph 5.4, it says, uh, Qualys accepts and underwrites the financial risk of any problems occurring during the construction process, but stands to gain from the developer profits from completing the development within time and budget. So the question is, can Qualys fail if they're a wholly owned company? If they did cock it up really badly, we'd have to bail them out, wouldn't we? Yes, Philip. Uh, that would be a decision that we'd have to make at the time, um, Councillor Heap. Uh, they are a company, any, I think I like, highly unlikely they would fail to that sort of extent, but there is a risk uh, with any development. Um, we don't know what's underneath uh, Baker's Lane car park. I guess if we hit a couple of Second World War bombs and a sinkhole, then the cost might go significantly. Um, that is always a risk, but there's a, that's a risk whoever develops that site. Uh, if Qualys got to a point where they were running out of money, we, they would have to come back to the council to see what we're willing to do for it. Thank you for turning your microphone down. Yeah. Okay. Council I'll press the right switch this time. Yeah. Councillor Wixley. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I, I'm not going to comment on the finance of it, but obviously that's quite important. But what I'm actually interested in is the whole itself or the sports centre and to say I'm, I'm very impressed with the plans and uh, I'm exceptionally pleased that the sports hall has now been included which wasn't uh, I think when the, the idea was first muted. I've just got a couple of comments which are on the Press and Starkey report, the consultant's report uh, on page 73. Uh, there's three columns there. In the third one, it refers to user groups that should be engaged within the future. And uh, my particular interest is, is football, actually. I was in, involved in local football for quite a long time. I'm a bit disappointed to see that amongst the, the football clubs listed, that Loughton Football Club isn't there. Uh, Loughton Football Club was formed in 1965 by a 15-year-old and 56 years later, he's, he's still running the club. And uh, I spoke to him tonight and he would like to be a uh, Loughton Football Club to be added to that list. It shouldn't be confused with GFA Loughton, which I understand is actually a commercial operation. So I, I, I would request that, uh, that they are added to the list and he would appreciate that uh, Keith Campen, who's run the club for all those years. Uh, so that, I hope that point can be taken on board. Uh, my, my second point is on page uh, 76, and it refers to car parking. 
I'm, I'm familiar with the parking arrangements at the sports centre at Hemdall Street. And I'm pleased that it says that the parking will be free. Uh, I think there obviously will have to be a lot more parking than that provided at Hemdall Street. But it's the, the disadvantage of it being free is that um, there was a problem at Hemdall Street, which other people who weren't using the sports centre were parking there. But um, they got a very good system there, which because the sports centre might be used at the moment, but it's where if you park there, then you use the sports centre, but you read, put your registration number in on a board and that then tells you how long you've got to, uh, you're allowed to park there. So I, I think something like that needs to be implemented as regards to the car parking. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure you want to go into the detail this evening, Councillor Phillip. No, there's, there's a couple of things I'll say. We, we'll certainly look at whether uh, we've got the right list of consultees for, for this that may not necessarily come in under finance and economic development. I would also point out that it does not say on page 76 that the car parking will be free. It says very clearly they have assumed the parking will be free for the purposes of the work that they have done. That is not yeah. a decision that's yet been made. Yeah. Thank you. OK, moving on, Councillor John Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I mean, I lean towards the uh, the, the same model that was used for, for Waltham Abbey, which obviously the council's got experience of, of doing and the places leisure got experience of doing. Um, you know, these are not bog standard things to build. And certainly it makes sense to ensure that you've got uh, an experienced and expert team doing these things. And the Waltham Abbey uh, build, you know, seemed largely um, successful and has you know, resulted in, in, a, in a good result. Um, I'm also you know, pleased to see um, the sports consultancy report um, and the fact that its recommendations and uh, the outcome of the public consultation are now taken into account. Can I just ask a bit more about the sports hall? I mean, it's described as a four-court sports hall in the um, in the report, um, but I mean, as you'll know from Sport England um, and the more detailed discussions with the governing bodies. There are different sorts of four court sports halls. So the ones which are you know, literally just enough room to fit four courts in, and there are ones which are sized so that you can get you know coaches or judges or uh, um, you know other participants or or whatever um, on on the sidelines. Um, and that's that's made reference to. It'd be helpful to clarify you know what what size a four court sports hall to deliver what um, will be there because clearly if we want to involve you know these additional sports and ensure the capacity is used as much as possible. We want to make sure it's as flexible as possible. And finally, the bit about the, the land title, can you just clarify which sites that um, applies to and what the issue is and how far we are towards resolving that? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Philip, I think there's bits there that are for tonight and bits for another time. Uh, absolutely, Chairman. And there. Uh... I, I think Council Whitehouse mistakes what this report is about. Uh, it's not going into the detail of what any individual construction is going to be. That is for another place and another time. Um, I also don't think that this is the right place to say that we will definitely go with uh, places leisure for the construction, because if you say, say that straight off the top, then you lose a big chunk of your negotiating position. We do have a second option with Qualys, and we will the cabinet agrees, we will negotiate with both uh, people to see where, what the best offer that we can get is, recognising, of course, that we're talking with two different developers, one who has experience in, in delivering this and one who doesn't, and that may carry weight in the assessment. Um, I must confess, I don't know the detail of the title issues. I don't know whether Mr Small has that to hand. If he doesn't, then we'll get back to uh, Council Whitehouse. But, uh, Andrew, do you want to say anything on this one? Thank you, Councillor Philip. But not, not precisely. I, I know there were some rights of way and access issues around um, Hemel Street and Baker's, Baker's Lane that, that we're, we're having to uh, work through. Uh, and I think that's the, the primary primary reason. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Councillor Brooks. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Leader. Um, just, you know, I'm very excited about the prospect of a new pool in Epping, um, particularly uh, as it's getting a bit um, uh, closer to fruition. And for all sorts of reasons, we've changed the site. Just a couple of points that I would like to, to make, if that's all right. 
One is that in the original plans, there was a plan for a spa. That personally wasn't something that I was particularly in favour of. Um, what I was, what we did learn from Waltham Abbey is that at the last minute, um, people very much did want a steam room in there. Now, I know because of COVID, which by the time, all being well, in two years when this is open, or perhaps slightly less, um, all being well, that the demand at Loughton normally and Waltham Abbey, the steam room is very popular. And it's not that big. Um, and I was just disappointed to see that the idea of steam and sauna had been dropped because it's very popular with the members. The second thing was that there is a small room in the Abbey, which was done because I think it was a deal with the community centre that was um, you know, knocked down to build the centre. But it's used for a lot of other things. And a small room, multifunction room, could be used for a creche and lots of other things like training lifeguards. It doesn't have to be that big. And I was sorry to see that that couldn't be fitted into the plans. And finally, the one point I would like to say about car parking, which we, we can't decide on that tonight, as Councillor Philip has said, um, but it's quite a, a hot topic in Loughton when Loughton's up and running. I, I do feel the figures have been worked out on the basis of a good number of people from the villagers coming in to have their swimming lessons. Um, and people are funny about paying for parking. Um, you know, we don't want people driving to Waltham Abbey because it's free, because I have heard other people say they do that in Loughton because they like the free car parking. Just a point that I hope we can look at that later in detail. Yeah, good, good points, Councillor Brooks. But let's say the new centre will be a very different centre to the past one. And um, obviously we, we have to look at that as we get closer to it. Um, OK, Councillor Janet Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman. I don't know what order you're taking these in from the beginning. Anyhow, uh, my query is about paragraph 6.3, where it refers to temporary and permanent loss of car park income, because it's always been said that there will be the same number of car parking spaces in the multi-storey as are being lost. Um, so I don't understand why we're talking about permanent loss of car park income, which presumably relates to spaces. And I do wonder whether you know, you really are convinced that we have enough spaces there because I can't see that we will with the, the leisure, the cinema, the householders are sure to have cars and the staff. I, I just wondered if the research is really adequate that has come up with that number of car parking spaces. But I really want clarification of 6.3 in this reference to lost income. Please. Thank you, Chairman. That's Philip. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I, I can explain it quite simply. Uh, it all depends where that car park ends up after it's constructed, uh, Council Whitehouse. If we, the Council, re, uh, repurchase the, the constructed car park from Qualys, then we will retain car parking income. If the car park stays in Qualys' ownership, uh, then we will lose the car parking income directly because it will go to Qualys. That said, we because uh, Qualys has the loan for... Um, construction of the multi-storey car park, uh, they will be paying us interest on that loan and we will therefore get gain the benefit of that interest. Those two sums are very similar um, so it doesn't, it doesn't make a significant difference to the overall uh, medium term financial strategy. So it's not to do with reduction in car parking spaces, it's where that direct revenue stream goes to, whether it goes uh, to Qualys from the car park and us from Qualys for an interest, or whether it comes to us for the car park, uh, and not Qualys and not the interest to us. So that's how that works out. Um, in terms of the detail of individual developments, that's not for this report. Okay, thank you. Last person, Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman, and I'm pleased to see that progress is being made. Since I was elected five years ago, I think this is probably the issue that I've spoken about most. and. Um, I was delighted um, that the plans of the sports centre would also include the squash courts and sports hall too, although I know that's not what um, this report is strictly about, but that's something I was advocating for from the beginning. Um, I, um, I, I agree with this approach and I think it's a sensible route forward. I think places for people have done a great job in Wolfram Abbey, so it's sensible that we enter into negotiations with them too. 
Um, my question is, will the current situ um, the current issues, which will be coming to full council in February, delay the sports centre in any way? Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Philip. Chairman, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question because I don't know what the result of the uh, council in February is going to come up with. Um, we clearly have a situation where, as far as the car park is concerned, we're not providing any more or any less car parking, so that shouldn't be caught up on an air quality strategy. Um, the air quality strategy is primarily around uh, residential and commuting, so it may have an impact on the planning permission for the sports centre, but again, we cannot start construction on the sports centre until the uh, multi-storey car park is in place and operational, Otherwise, we would impact the parking provision with an Epping, which we've made very clear that we are not going to be doing. OK, thank you very much. OK, um, members, you've got recommendations before you. Can I agree those recommendations? Agreed. 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 Much. Agreed. 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 Item 11, it's certainly your light tonight, Councillor Philip. Onga Town Centre, pages 87 to 146. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I, did, I did feel I couldn't let it all... The uh, Council of Holy Whitbread, like it was in the last ca cabinet meeting. Um, in the last, in fact, referring to the last cabinet meeting, we brought forward uh, a very similar report uh, for Waltham Abbey. It's, I do want to kick this one off by saying we're already working uh, on the next one after Ongar. We hope to have all of these reports in place by the end of this council year. Um, what we're doing here is we're looking to reinvigorate Ongar Town Centre. We are coming up with a number of activities which can be done and like the Waltham Abbey one that came to the last uh, cabinet meeting we will pr produce a project plan of individual deliverables which I will report back either to cabinet to council or in the members bulletin depending which way is going to be most timely to let members see that list of product uh, projects and when they happen. As far as uh, this report itself is concerned, there is a detailed uh, report from uh, our consultant highlighting the various areas which we should be looking at. And in that um, report, there are a number of things called out as being things that we actually should be aiming to do. I do just want to highlight uh, one of them, which uh, I know the Epping Onga Railway concerns over which is looking at whether we can um, whether there is the possibility of having a commuter service between Ongar and Epping along that line. I think what we're highlighting there is we just need to see what the appropriate financial position of that is and whether <coughs> the best served is by continuing with the current uh, recreational use which is very attractive to members uh, to, of the public outside our area and pulls them in and that actually brings significant benefit to our district. I think I'll leave it at that, Chairman. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much. Um, if I go first of all, I think in this instance, normally I keep it to Cabinet first, but Councillor Paul Kesper, I know you do an awful lot for the Town Centre in Onga and I know you want to make a comment this evening. Uh, thank you, Chairman. This is not actually a question. I'd like to thank the Cabinet first for commissioning this report and appointing Paul Messenger of Studio 3. Uh, his very considerable experience of retail has ensured that there are no unachievable proposals in the report. It builds on work done by Onga Town Council. And as Ward Councillor, I fully support the recommendations and ask Cabinet to accept the report and also to appoint the Town Manager without delay. There's a lot of work to be done between district, town, and the many interested parties in Onga. And the sooner we get started, the better. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Keska. Councillor Philip, do you want to comment? Yeah, Th thank you, uh, Councillor Keska, for the endorsement of this. Uh, I would point out, as we said uh, during the Waltham Abbey debate last time, uh, the Town Centre Project Manager will not be dedicated to individual town centres. As we bring forward, we may need to add additional resource. One of the things I am actively exploring is whether uh, we would like to nominate a sitting council from that area as a town centre champion to work with the 
project manager just to, get, to keep things um, moving in the right direction. I'm working on getting a rule description for that. Clearly, it's not, it's something that needs to be judged sensitively because in all these areas we do have town councils. Uh, we do already have, hopefully, a, a town centre project manager. We will have decisions that have been made and endorsed by cabinet. So I want to make sure that it's not just uh, a stamp for the town centre champion, but they can actually add significant value to what we're doing. So watch this space. I will bring information about that back uh, as, as we go forward. Thank you very much. Right, back to the cabinet then. Councillor Bedford. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'd just like to say I welcome the report. I think it's a very good report. I've also spoken to Mary Dad, who was an ex-councillor for Ongar Town Council, who's working on the current neighbourhood plan. She actually fully supports the document and is very impressed by the way the document has been written. There are a lot of quick wins in there that actually help Ongar uh, out of the situation it is at the moment, and I fully support the proposals that are in here. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nigel Avey. Thank you, Leader. Uh, yes, I thought it was a very good report as well. And I'm looking forward to the other reports for the other town centres. Uh, harking back to the point uh, the, in the agenda on highway ranges, they are mentioned somewhat in this report. And obviously, again, it's about managing expectations that what they can achieve. If I have them being worked in Ongar for a while, it means they're not working throughout the rest of the district. So we will have to think about that. We need also to think about car parking tariffs um, and uh, give that some thought because I think one of the suggestions is there's an hour free parking in the car parks in the centre. Uh, we need to think about that carefully, I think, because of the impact on other car parks in the district and how they are working. Um, and final point is really, um, I think we've always, always talked about re-establishing the commuter line between Ongar and Epping, and I think the stumbling block has always been TfL, who have never allowed the concepts of a platform to be put in at Epping to allow trains to come in. So I, I think that will fail, I'm afraid, unless someone could think of an idea of holding TfL to hostage to make them do something. Um, thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I've now got... I can... Councillor Patel. Yeah, oh, sorry, Councillor Philip. I do apologise. Thank you. There's just a couple of things there. Uh, one to echo what Councillor Bedford was saying that um, the quick wins are the key part here. We must, what, what these are all factored around is doing things quickly and efficiently. Um, I take on board Councillor Avey's comments about uh, the high risk rangers. It is possible, however, that if we are allocating funding towards this town centre regeneration, it may be that we can use some of that funding to expand the uh, high risk rangers approach because some of their time is spent in uh, Waltham Abbey and Ongar and others as this goes forward. Um, I take his point about car parking. We will look at that. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Councillor Philip. I think you're spot on. We're going to have to look afresh at what we're doing with our town centres, and this is the way to do it. Okay, moving forward, we have got Councillor Anaket Patel. Thank you, Leader. Um, I welcome this report as well. I think um, uh, the quality of the report that's, that, that's, that's before us this evening, uh, detailed work that's gone in behind uh, bringing forward the uh, um, the paper by, by Studio 3, again, is, is of an excellent quality and follows the project brief that was given to him. We as, we as a cabinet wanted um, achievable targets in the short, medium and, and, and longer term. It is really important, especially... Uh, especially now that we're, we're in our third lockdown, that businesses feel that we are supporting them. It's in our absolute interest to ensure that, that, that our towns, uh, our high street areas uh, are, are vibrant and, and, um, and, and provide the, the, the services that they offer to our residents. When we began this process back in, um, in July, the term aspirational was used when, when, when we set about or, or when we started to look at the economic recovery plan. Um, and we are showing that we, we went business, you know, that the work that went on in the last six months shows that we are um, 
we are keen to 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 uh, rejuvenate to reinvigorate our, our town center areas um the the, the quick wins are obviously the key you know, to really get the buy in and 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 to get um uh, the, the the local shops um on, on board with us the town center partnership that was there previously in longer uh, was a vibrant uh, town center partnership the most vibrant out of, out of the six that we had unfortunately um it, it it drifted away and i think with with the work that we're looking to bring forward and i and, and i welcome the idea as well at council about having a um a, a champion for each town center area because i think we, with that person you know Focused and driven to 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 bring in the best for our residents uh, and and for the and for the businesses that are on the high streets, we can really achieve something special. Um, so look forward uh, to to when Buckerstill uh, Buckerstill's um, uh, viability study comes forward. Um, I know it, I know Loughton is next on the agenda, um, but I think you know the same. The, the, you know we're, we're moving in the right direction and hopefully with this time next year when, we, when when all of the reports are in hand and we've actually started to work on these things, um, we can sit back and, and say, you know, we've done a good job here. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Patel. Councillor Philip, did you want to add to that? No, I think Councillor Patel's covered that. Okay, that's brilliant. Councillor Sam Kane. Thank you, Lena. Just a couple of comments. Well, looking at the two reports next to each other, Waltham Abbey and now um, the, uh, the one we have in front of us now, it just um, shows the importance of looking at each town centre individually, as they are also very different. They have different requirements, and I'm glad that we're not doing this on a district-wide approach, and we're actually focusing in on individual town centres. The second point I wanted to make is, having got the approval from uh, Cabinet last week, uh, last Cabinet for the Waltham Abbey plan, I just want to say that we're already moving through those quick wins, thanks to the uh, the, the Rangers, who have done some fantastic work in, in Waltham Abbey already. Um, collaboration with the Town Council and the Town Partnership, absolutely key. This is not something that we can do on our, by ourselves. It requires that collaboration between all interested parties within the towns to make these things work. And we are getting there, and I'm really pleased to say that Waltham Abbey is already on the way. Yeah, that's really good news, uh, Councillor Kane. And I do think the point you make, it's really important that each town centre has its own bespoke approach, and that includes all parts of the district and some of our rural villages as well, because even they need some support. When we, get, we go through the COVID period and we start to look at the unlocking of the opportunities in Epping Forest, it needs to be the whole of Epping Forest, but every area individually and bespoke. So the sooner we get the rest of these reports, Together, the better. Um, okay, where am I now? I'm going to go. Just, to... If I could just add to that, Chip. Yeah, if I could just add to that, Chip. I mean, it is one of the reasons why we're we're doing all the different the different ones. We can't bring them all in one go because there's significant amount of work to make sure we've got the right thing. So I I know there are some people who are not at the top of the queue. So both might be longer being done first, but we are working the others. And as I said, we hope to have all the major ones. Uh, major town centres by the end of this uh, council year. And I have to say there's the two that really need early support, in my opinion, um, to get them re really going and give them that jump start as we come through COVID. Um, one of the things I would say becomes more and more highlighted as we go through this this evening, and I know, Councillor Philip, you'll be only too alert to what I'm going to say, is that need for a place budget um, in order that we can get things done. So uh, we're going to be there with our begging bowl for a place bucket when we, we sit down to talk about the budget uh, again. Um, OK, I'm going to go outside the Cabinet for a minute because Councillor Janet Whitehouse has been waiting very patiently. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've had a, a, an email from a, a resident in, in Onga who's read the report and he's very supportive of the ideas in there and uh, says the idea of the weekend food market and stalls in the library car park is brilliant. Um, but he does have some concerns about the idea of a town centre manager, um, someone coming from outside the town who perhaps doesn't know it. He asks whether instead of um, investing in the new role of a town centre manager, could the funds be invested in commissioning an appropriate person to organise a programme of weekend events 
linked into the Epping um, Railway Programme to drive tourism. He does say that um, there is someone in the town who's passionate about it and, and you know, if that person was asked to help organise the event to be sure to be successful. And what's just been said about the town centre champions, it seems to me that maybe that person might be a good town centre champion. But I just wonder if, you know, consideration could be given. I don't know what the funding is for these things, whether it would be better to spend that funding of the town centre manager on the actual events that you're organising and have someone local to sort of oversee it all with a bit of support. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Philip. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm afraid the answer is no, Councillor Whitehouse. Uh, as I highlighted earlier, um, the town centre project manager, and it's, it's clear it's a project manager, it's not somebody who manages the town centre. Uh, we had those in place before and they weren't very successful. This is somebody who's taking the identified tasks, putting them into a project, and making sure that those projects take place. Um, it, that uh, project manager is not dedicated, as I said, to an individual town. Uh, we've got a number of uh, towns and centres across the district. Uh, we will have at least one, maybe more, uh, town centre project managers. But the key thing has been, has been highlighted here. We're looking here for quick wins um, of things that can be done. Uh, but to run that successfully, you have to run it as a project and make sure that the tasks are there they were scheduled in the right order. The, the start and finish dates are adhered to. Um, if there's a person within Ongar who is willing to do things, I suggest they get in contact with Ongar Town Council and that because the Town Centre Regeneration works in conjunction with Town Council. As we've heard, the Town Council is behind what we're doing. Um, that would be the right way to deal with that. Uh, and we need to make sure that we have a Town Centre project manager so that things that we do decide that we're going to do actually do happen. That, that's key to this. It's all very well having good ideas, but if they don't happen, we don't achieve anything. That's the reason for the project manager. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Murray. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I found this a very interesting report following on from the Wolf Mappy one, because uh, I'm very conscious that we are district councillors. Uh, and I'm pleased that uh, Wolf and Mary had attention at your last meeting. We've had this report today. Uh, I think the uh, philosophy of how it's written and the ideas are, are great. Uh, just a, a couple of points, please. Uh, I think working in partnership with the town and parish councils in the appropriate places is, is very good. And uh, they're going to help deliver uh, some of this, I would hope. Uh, when Loughton's turn does come, uh, I'm very conscious that Loughton is one community. I've always seen it as one community. Uh, I've represented two very different parts of it over the years, Broadway and now Loughton Roading, but I've always seen it as one community. This is where I would just slightly deviate from this. When we come to the shopping centres, I think you do need to see Loughton High Road uh, and the Broadway layout and uh, as, as fairly distinct. I do think that they do have different needs and are in different situations and so on. So uh, though, as I say, Loughton is definitely one community when it comes to uh, shopping areas and our high roads. I think we would need to see uh, the high road as being significantly different from the Broadway and vice versa. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Phillip, anything to add to that? Yes, uh, and uh, wearing my previous hat, uh, Councillor Murray will remember that actually within the local plan, uh, both uh, Loughton High Road and Loughton Broadway are separately identified as prime shopping frontages. Um, I don't see any reason why we would look at that differently. What it doesn't um, necessarily mean is it won't necessarily come in two separate reports, but they will be looked at separately because the Councillor Murray is right, they are two uh, different areas with different uh, requirements. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Holly Whitbread.
sorry, just realised I was muted. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't think there's too much I can add. Um, this is a really excellent report. And actually, I think it's right that Onga and Waltham Abbey have been brought forward first. I think this, this piece of work in particular is vital as we move into COVID recovery and hopefully in the summer months move back to some no normality. So I really welcome this. And also what I would say is key is we are really looking kind of beyond the high street and um, with the community outreach we're doing in both Onga and Waltham Abbey. So it is key to see this um, this report being brought forward and the focus there that I believe is necessary. I think the idea of uh, champions is fantastic. And I would say that I know that Onga has got some excellent district councillors and a really strong representation at a district level. So I, I hope that they can... Um, take on a role like this well. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Phillip. I don't think there's anything there to argue with. Uh, um, I, would, I would agree, it's, it's, it's an important part. Uh, glad that we're doing longer now. Brilliant, superb. Okay, um, so can we agree to recommendations therein? I agree. Great. Superb. Going on to item 12, digital gateway for place. Councillor Phillip. Thank you, Chairman. Um, digital gateway from place came out of the discussions that we had around recovery and uh, from COVID and following on from that. Uh, we did look and it came back to Cabinet about whether the all singing, all dancing approach was the right one for us to take, and we concluded it was not. Uh, we have um, carry on working on this uh, and this report brings through a, brings forward a, a couple of options for us to look at. Um, we have had a number of uh, preparatory meetings looking at this and I will be looking at both um, Councillor Holly Whitbread and Councillor Sam Kane to contribute here. Uh, essentially uh, what we're looking at there's two parts to it. One is looking at uh, how we improve uh, the electronic pr uh, presence of our businesses, and secondly, how we go about uh, providing some additional uh, online support for our businesses. My own personal preference on this one is that we should not be looking to craft our own dedicated uh, platform, but we should be acquiring something off the shelf. I think it uh, reduces the risk, and particularly in the current time frame it allows a much more rapid turnaround in terms of an implementation but uh, the details are in the report chairman uh, I'm happy to listen to what my fellow cabinet members say thank you very much Councillor Kane thank you leader uh, yes just to echo what uh, Councillor Phillip was just saying the the reason that uh, certainly I myself favour the off-the-shelf solution is, is exactly that it keeps the cost down. Uh, and more importantly, it provides for speed of delivery because uh, we need to be uh, supporting our businesses as soon as possible rather than waiting for a protracted uh, development uh, cycle. Uh, and of course, it reduces the risks of, uh, 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 to the council. So yes, uh, the, the off-the-shelf solution uh, tailored to our requirements is the correct way to go forward, I believe. Um, and it's also important that we do um, assist our businesses in as many ways as possible. And this is just one of the ways that we can do that, uh, just by uh, raising the digital profile, giving a, uh, a common access point. Uh, and I, I'm, 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 I would urge my colleagues to um, support the proposals. Right. Thank you very much. Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. Um, myself and Councillor Kane and Councillor Philip had a great meeting with um, John Houston and team, and it was really useful to discuss this. I think this is a really important piece of work. I think we all have realised how important digital methods are across the COVID crisis, and they've been so important both kind of personally and for business practices as well. So I really welcome this and agree with the recommendations within it. Okay, thank you very much. I've got Councillor Patel. Thank you, Leader. Um, I welcome this report as well. Uh, I think uh, the work that um, Mr. Houston and his team did around the biz uh, and bringing that to, to where it was shows um, when they get a project idea together, uh, uh, the, our residents, um, and, and when they get a project idea together and they deliver upon it, 
our residents do benefit, and I can see that our businesses will benefit from uh, from what's being proposed in this report. So um, I welcome it, and um, I'll, uh, again, can't wait to see that um, what we what we achieve from it. Great. Okay, Councillor Philip, anything to add? Uh, simply, if uh, in any of the cabinet members have <clears throat> an indication on whether their preference is for shop appy or click it local, um, I think the case for having the maybe software is is a good one. Um, but uh, if, if cabinet members have any indication about uh, shop appy or click it local, or are they happy to leave it uh, to me and the economic development team to pick the best one? in terms of finance and, and <clears throat> match for our district. Uh, that's, that's great. Okay, Councillor Sam Kane. Speaking for myself, I don't have the knowledge or the skill to make a, uh, a selection between those three. I think it's far better that those that know what they're talking about do the studies and choose the right product. Okay, sounds good to me. Um, members, can we agree to recommendations that are tonight? Agreed. Yeah, Jim, can I just modify it? Can I modify the second one because we really consider the proposals uh, and our recommendation is that we go for the off the shelf software uh, rather than developing our own and we leave it up to uh, the economic development team in conjunction with the portfolio holder to make the final decision. I'm happy with that. Thank you. Okay, can we agree the amended recommendations in that case? Agreed. Agreed. Um, Members, I, I haven't spoken during the debate, but we've had three very good economic development um, reports this evening. I'd like to thank officers for the time that they put into them because um, they're doing the day job of keeping the council running, but also bringing forward some really important reports to us. So, and actually some of the best reports I've seen for a long time from an economic development perspective, really looking forward, um, particularly as we start to look forward to COVID recovery. I just want to put on record my thanks, particularly to John Houston, Mr. Dorr, and and my cabinet team who have been working on this, and, uh, and of course, um, Anaket's uh, COVID recovery piece. Um, we've got a lot of work to do, and we need to get to the rest of the district, as Councillor Murray will remind us. We haven't done Loughton yet, and we haven't done Buckle Still yet. Um, so we do need to get around the district. But I do believe what we have before us with what we've heard earlier this evening around highways ranges is probably when we get through this dreadful, dreadful, dreadful pandemic is a real opportunity of a silver lining um, to this dark cloud. And I think we can really do something good for the district. Um, it was funny, I was speaking to someone earlier on today, they reminded me why you become a councillor in the first place. And actually that drive for all of us is still there. And it's good to see so many people engaged in trying to do the right thing. So uh, thank you for what you're doing, particularly to the officers who have worked so hard on these reports. I know how busy you are, and I do appreciate it. Item 13 is the tree planting strategy. You seem to be marred in trees at the moment. Councillor Bedford. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd just like to say, really, I'm really pleased the reports come forward. Uh, it has been slow. It has been frustrating, and we have been hampered by COVID as well. We got to a certain stage with the green art project and with our own tree planting projects, but then suddenly everything caved in on us and we couldn't move forward. It's been great that they've been able to identify areas of council owned land that could be planted up. And it's great that this could be a mix of private and public tree planting. Um, not much left for us to do this season as the main tree planting season seems to be running from October through to about March time. But I'm hopeful that we might even still get a few trees in the ground this year. I know that um, the Woodland Trust have provided a great deal of trees for local authority for town and parish councils, and I urged town and parish councils earlier on in the year to apply for the packs. Um, that was, I think you could apply for two packs of 50 trees each, so there was a number of trees that could be applied for. Um, and I think that going forward, we should try and put something together where we apply and get uh, on bulk for the whole of the district. That would give us about 2,200 trees a year, Bakshi, uh, these are the little whips that can be put in various locations. Um, but we do have a supply and we do have um, some support from private enterprise that are willing to donate trees to offset some of their carbon footprint. I really welcome the report and I don't think there's much more I can add. I think it's actually in the executive summary sums most of it up. So thank you very much. 
uh, leader. Any questions? Thank you very much. Okay, I've got no cabinet members indicating to speak, so I'll go straight to Councillor Heath. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, it's all good. Um, is it possible for uh, private individuals to offer land for growing trees if they're going to be uh, just growing for a little while and then lifted up and transported elsewhere? I, I think I've got hundreds very, of beech trees in the garden. I think that's <coughs> a very good initiative. Um, perhaps we can use some of them in Epping Forest because they seem to be short of a few beech trees at the moment and they seem to be dying. So perhaps a good initiative there. I'd leave you to make contact with um, Mr. Houston if you're offering beech trees. That sounds good to me. Uh, any trees that we can get in the ground sounds good. And uh, obviously we need to be looking at where we're planting them as well. Ideally, we want, as I've said before, like willows on floodplains and things like that so that we can make best use of the type of tree that we plant. Thank you. Councillor Patel. Uh, just a quick question for Councillor Bedford. Uh, how does this compare with the work that he was doing around the Green Art Project? It's intrinsically linked together, really, because I'm still chairman of the Green Arc. It's just that we've not been able to meet. Um, and the background of that is obviously it's it's this is district wide. The Green Arc is more about linking areas that run from the Thames right away across. And it's it is the, a Green Arc effectively running up from the Thames up through Epping Forest and across the Barnet Forest. And it's what we can do about trying to link those other areas from Brentwood and across to the land of the fans uh, and, and in that area, that's what Green Arc is about, trying to link areas together, create wilding and uh, getting trees in the ground, but not only trees, it's about creating natural habitat space as well for um, like, what they call it, um, open pasture land. It's not all about trees, it's about biodiversity at the end of the day. That's, the Green Arc is, is a major contributor um, and working with Corporation of London is key with that, as well as the Woodland Trust, etc. Lovely. Thank you very much. Councillor Cherry McCready. Thank you, Chairman. And thank you, Councillor Bedford. And I just wanted to say I really welcome this report. Thank you. Super. Thank you very much. Councillor Sunga. Thank you, Leader. Uh, a very good report. Well done, uh, Councillor Bedford. Um, in uh, in Chigwell, um, we've had a number of people um, where their loved ones have passed away in, in the district and they've donated money towards planting trees. How much of a take up um, have you had on that particular front? Just out of curiosity. Councillor I, Bedford. Personally, I'm unaware of any take up on that at all, but I could pass you, I'll get them. Mr. Houston, perhaps to uh, give you a call and discuss that with you in case he's aware of any trees that have been donated. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. So I've come out of order a bit. Councillor Murray. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, on this occasion, in full, uh, full agreement with the portfolio holder, uh, thank you, Councillor Bedford, for presenting this report. Uh, I think the company of trees has really helped lots of people during the lockdown because uh, many of us uh, almost prefer trees to people. Not quite, but we haven't had the company of people during the three lockdowns, but we have had the company of our wonderful trees. Uh, Councillor Sunga's kind of touched on what I was going to mention. We do, in fact, do have quite an active scheme where people can, uh, can uh, donate money for a tree in memory of people. And uh, my question was going to be, as part of this strategy, I think it might just be a good idea to give that a little bit more publicity. We do have an existing scheme. Uh, I know people who have, have done it over the years. So let's use this tree strategy as an opportunity to give that a little bit uh, more publicity. So perhaps a few Facebook posts from EFDC about that scheme uh, wouldn't do any harm at all. Because I know people welcome it and I know quite a few residents who have actually used it when they've lost loved ones or whatever. They like to donate a, a tree in memory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Whitsley. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I also welcome the report. Uh, what I'm particularly interested in is um, the links between the district council and town and parish councils, which is mentioned uh, on page 165. Just wonder if there's any more information about that. Uh, because we have discussed um, this at uh, the Mountain Town Council 
Um, I think we're in some difficulties at the moment because it, it does require recruiting volunteers. And we were in the process of recruiting volunteers for uh, community litter picking. And of course, everything's ground to a halt with COVID. But uh, I, I think whatever support uh, the district council can give to town and parish councils would be helpful. I mean, to be things like health and safety issues, I, I suspect, uh, have to be addressed and all, all that sort of thing. So, um, but the other thing is, that I, I wondered if uh, ward councillors are going to be consulted on um, places to plant trees because uh, I, I've um, get requests for trees to be planted on Jessel Green, for example. Um, so. I, it would be useful to know if, if that's going to happen. And I think, I think finally, I'd, I'd like to say uh, thank you to the portfolio holder and also John Houston the, uh, for resurrecting the Green Arc scheme, which had sort of um, dropped off the menu. And in fact, they invited me to take part in, in a meeting to, to resurrect that, which I think was probably a couple of years ago now. And I just wondered if... Um, Councillor Bedford could uh, give an update on how that's going. I note that it's sort of been held up again because of COVID, but if he could give some indication as to uh, perhaps where it is like to progress. Thank you. Thank you. I think better start, first of all, with the first question about town and parish councils and was asking around that, our involvement with those. We have been involved with town and parish councils, and I think we've also got an idea of setting up a volunteer register so that we can, if we have a major tree planting project, we can put the call out for help amongst volunteers. So you could give up a weekend or you could give up a specific day and time, turn up and assist with the tree planting. I mean, there's not a great deal to the actual tree planting themselves, mainly it's putting the spade in the ground, wiggling it about a bit to create a hole and shoving the whip in there and then just putting it back in again. And you can see in some countries, they can plant up to 100,000 trees a day you know, with the right number of volunteers and you just crack on and get it done. Um, I think it's a little bit more involved where we were concerned. Uh, regarding Jessel Green, yes, Jessel Green has been mentioned a few times in our background discussions, and I think that is an ideal area uh, going forward if we can get something off the ground. It would make a lovely wooded area. I've seen, I know Jessel Green quite well myself. Um, and, and so there, we would be involved in town councils when we come to those decisions as mentioned by Councillor Murray about making sure we involve people. I think this is an opportunity going forward, making sure that the district does get the trees in the ground. Now coming to your last point regarding the green arc, we were getting on quite well with the green arc. And then we couldn't do any more. Apologies for that. Just throwing to myself. Thank you. Um, we were getting on quite well with that project and um, Unfortunately, because of what happened, we had some restructuring, the green arc faltered a little bit, but I don't let it go away. Mr. Houston will tell you that I keep calling him, what's going on, where are we? And I'm sure he's on there here this evening. And if he's got any further update, he could just chip in. But we are mindful of the fact we don't want to let it drop again. Thank you. Right, thanks very much. I'm just going to see if... Mr. Houston is still on here. I don't believe he is. So I'm going to go to Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. And I think this is a, a really great report, which I'm all in favour of. And I would like to commend the portfolio holder for his passion on this topic, because I've had numerous conversations with Councillor Bedford about uh, tree planting. And I know it's something he's very passionate about personally. And it's, it's a great thing for protecting our environment and improving our air quality. Um, I, I know and I understand that Essex are doing a widespread um, tree planting programme. What I would be interested to find out, and I um, I don't expect um, Councillor Bedford to have the figures at, at the top of his head, but it's how many trees have actually been planted over the course of the past few years. So I think it is a really good thing. I know the government um, in the last election committed to um, planting millions of trees. So um, the more, the better. Thank you, Chairman. If I, I can just come back on that just to, I'm not sure the actual figures, but I do know that Wolfham Abbey quite, planted quite a lot of trees last year. Uh, they had a couple of areas they were planting. And it, generally there are, I would say, a couple of thousand trees have gone in the ground over the last couple of years. But that's nothing compared to the ambition that we've got. I'd like to see a million trees planted in, in our district. Essex are quite uh, uh, reserved in their 375,000 trees they want planted. And they actually took the leap of faith and identified ground ahead of us. 
But in saying that, I'm sure that we can match their trees and far out plant the trees that Essex are planting. Good. We have a competition for trees. Um, Councillor McCready, you want to come back again quickly? That was a wonderful speech, but muted. <laughs> Apologise. Uh, with technology. Just wanted to support what um, Councillor Holly Whitbread said and Councillor Bedford, um, that you obviously know uh, Epping Forest District Council's country care. And over the last few years, we have put in a lot of treatment. <laughs> um, the, the, the volunteer team has stood down at the moment because of COVID. So you've got a lot of um, very well-trained volunteers are doing very little at the moment, which might be useful to you as you, you, you restart the planting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, members, recommendations before you. Can I agree those recommendations? Agreed. Agreed. Brilliant. I've got no any other business. Chairman, no, yeah. can I just add one item on any other business, please? Uh, shouldn't really. Oh, okay. I was just going to give members an update. I saw clarification regarding the February council meeting, uh, um, what the state would be. If you don't want me to report it, that's fine. Um, it will come up at group leaders tomorrow, I'd imagine. But obviously, okay. we're, we're out of sync now with the agenda. Okay. If that's okay. Okay. Um, no need to exclude public and press. That's the close of the meeting. Thank you all very much.